Last week's tornado is prompting many people to reconsider their insurance coverage. Many people wait until a disaster like Wednesday's twister before making sure that everything is in order. First, there was Hurricane Hugo and its billion dollars in damage. Many residents didn't collect for all their losses because they didn't have insurance. Then last October, the earthquake in California, where fewer than two of every 10 residents had insurance. And now the tornado in Huntsville. Insurance will make it possible for these people to rebuild their homes, as some of the individual losses top a quarter of a million dollars. To find out, make a list of what you cannot afford to lose. Then see if your present policy covers it. A basic policy may cover a fire caused by a tornado, for example, but not wind or rain damage from that tornado. Natural disasters often require separate coverage and have deductibles as high as 10% of the value of your home. Putting together the pieces. Tonight, two schools in Huntsville are working to reopen their school doors. Wednesday's tornado smashed into Holy Spirit Catholic School and Jones Valley Elementary, destroying both. Holy Spirit will meet Monday night to talk about the situation. Meanwhile, Jones Valley residents met today to find out what would happen with their school children. <laughs> Hundreds of Jones Valley Elementary parents, students, and teachers filed into nearby Challenger receiving maps of the school as they entered. Tomorrow morning, these students will call the new Challenger School home. Today, school leaders told parents it may be two years before Jones Valley Elementary will be reopened. The school was leveled by Wednesday's tornado. For the next few days, counselors will be on hand to help teachers and students cope with the great loss. A lot of them are going to be much more fearful than usual. That's probably going to be the thing that parents are going to see most. They're going to be afraid to fall asleep. They're going to be having bad dreams. They're going to be afraid that we're going to have another storm. Uh, I think I have enough pencils. This afternoon, Jones Valley teacher Virginia Smith met with parents and students in her new classroom, going over what supplies she still needs and pledging to work with the third grade class to get them through this troubling time. A big part of my life has been spent there. Uh, 25 years of love and uh, you know, all the children that you remember. Amazingly, all the parents in Mrs. Smith's class wanted to help, even parents like Kathy Walworth, who lost not only the school, but her home. And to top it off, her husband is a minister at First Baptist, the church that suffered in Friday's daycare school fire. I think the, the emotional support that they have given to us and the love has meant even more so than the physical uh, help that they've given to us. And that has really um, been a big help in a time of, of crisis when you just have to go day by day to know what you're going to do next. Parents and teachers admit the next few months will be very tough, but say they're thankful the tornado did not hit two hours earlier when school was in session. The twister also slammed into Holy Spirit Catholic School and Church on Airport Drive. Monday night at 7, parents and teachers will meet at Grace Lutheran Church to discuss how they'll go about finding a new school building. We do know there will be no classes until after Thanksgiving. Well, Trinity United Methodist Church also proves that a church isn't just a building, but instead it's the people who make up the membership. Wednesday, the fatal tornado damaged the Airport Road Church building. Today, Trinity was forced to hold its fellowship and worship services at the Von Braun Civic Center. Beverly Taylor reports. Members of the Trinity United Methodist had a lot to talk about today, this being the first Sunday since the tornado. The Trinity building was undergoing a $5 million construction project when the tornado struck. That cost will increase now. We have no choice at this moment, save as the people of God, to be together in Jesus Christ. May God bless us. Trinity is very thankful there were no members of the congregation killed during the tornado, but there are some miraculous stories of survival. Wednesday, Ann Patterson was in the midst of the tornado. She was unable to get to the church basement because of the forceful winds. While lying on the ground, her arm was battered by flying debris. It's resolving nicely. It's painful, but I can deal with pain. <laughs> I can deal with pain a lot better than death, so just really feel lucky today. 
the people who lost family members in this and friends and the people who are gone because that can't be replaced. In Huntsville, Beverly Taylor, 31 Eyewitness News. Some Huntsville residents claim the city's new solid waste incinerator may have saved their lives. This is yet another of those amazing stories surrounding last week's tornado. No doubt we'll continue to hear more. The twister reportedly first touched down near the site of the incinerator. As Dave Hargrove reports, the waste burning plant appears to have served as a protective barrier for an adjacent neighborhood. Still preliminary damage estimates to the city's under construction waste to steam plant are at around $300,000. But the damage costs could have been much higher for this home across the street. How do you think that incinerator saved your life? By the force hitting it, you know, it hit it first and that kind of buried it off. But the way we was looking at it, it was coming between that accelerator and us. The path of the tornado seems to confirm Bernice's claim. After striking the incinerator, the twister apparently veered away from five nearby homes. The area of the incinerator hit would have been the pit where garbage is dumped, then sorted for burning. Let's play what if. What if the plant had already been in operation? The incinerator ashes is, is contained, and you know we, we have to assume that, that the steel structures and steel and concrete structures that it is that it is in would retain it. Uh, you know, I think the same question could be asked of any other material that's hazardous. Uh, you know, will the surrounding uh, material withstand a, hur a hurricane or an earthquake is a, is a question that you can only resolve if, if that event occurs. In Huntsville, Dave Hargrove, 31 Eyewitness News. So Madison County residents say county officials are ignoring their problems created by last Wednesday's tornado. Commissioners agree. County crews were concentrating their efforts with city workers to clear the debris at the airport road area. And only today did District 1 crews start picking up debris in rural areas. Commissioner Tillman Hill says it's just been a matter of priorities. I think uh, surely that uh, the chance that you might find a survivor is much more important than only just hauling rubbish off. Commissioner Hill adds that part of the delay was due to requests by utility crews waiting or wanting to restore service before cleanup efforts began. While cleanup crews continue to work in our area, debris from Wednesday's tornado is littered all over North Alabama. In the Paint Rock Valley area, 45 miles east of Huntsville, residents are picking up bits and pieces. Most of the larger pieces of debris were removed last week. Now residents are just finding small scraps, including some remains from Jones Valley Elementary. The memories are the same, only the building has changed. Today it was back to school for those 450 Jones Valley students. Wednesday's killer tornado demolished the school, leaving behind a gigantic pile of rubble. So today the youngsters were transferred to Challenger, where they'll finish out the school year. Amy Whitty reports. Early this morning, the buses rolled into Challenger, carrying Jones Valley Elementary students. The students were quickly greeted by hugs from the school principal. Good morning. How are you? Good to see you. Then it was off to their new classrooms, where every child had a story to tell about the tornado. The roof was gone, and what took the roof off my sister's room was the chimney. The chimney fell my sister's room. Dad said um, to get in the basement. But I was just so frantic, I just couldn't move. And my mom went outside and she heard this train sound. To help teachers and students cope with the great loss, counselors will be in the building for the next few days. Teachers are doing a great job today. They're encouraging the kids to talk about it. They're having them draw about it. It's just like with us as adults. We need to talk about it. And as we talk more about it, we can start to let go of it. How many of you feel that you might be a little more prone to take fire drill seriously from now on and leave in an orderly way. You can see how important it is, can't you? Hopefully this is one lesson students will never again have to use. In Huntsville, Amy Whitty, 31 Eyewitness News. Well, school kids aren't the only ones trying to start over today. Many of the small businesses in the village on Whitesburg plan to reopen over the next two days. While Winn-Dixie will remain closed for at least six weeks, the other shops in the mall want the public to know they're reopening and had already stocked up for the Christmas holidays. 
Well, doctors displaced by the tornado were reopening their practices today. The twister did extensive damage to several medical offices on Airport Road. Crestwood Hospital is helping many doctors relocate. Today, workers are setting up temporary housing for physicians on the hospital campus. The hospital hopes things will get close to normal soon. Records were not damaged. Uh, some of them were wet, uh, but uh, most of the records, according to the physicians I've talked to, have been retrieved. Uh, we have them stored in the hospital and in some of these storage trailers. Well, as these medical professionals put their lives and practices back together, a colleague attempts to put his life in order. This medical professional spent last Wednesday helping those in need, but as Linda Allen reports, while he was doing that, his own family had become victims of the tragedy. It was perhaps the most difficult time I have ever had to wait for news that I can recall. That thought was constantly lingering in the back of my mind. I know where everybody else is. I don't know where Louise McCord is. Not, not having that answer. The answer soon came. 61-year-old Louise McCord was dead, one of the tornado's 18 victims. McCord helped open the Airport Road Goldboro store 10 years ago. Today, nothing remains except memories of Louise. Ironically, that Wednesday, when rescuers were bringing victims to Huntsville Hospital, her son Robin was on duty. Shortly before midnight, he received a call. Authorities had found a body meeting his missing mother's description. Like many families, Robin came here to the Spry Funeral Home lobby to await his turn to identify what turned out to be his mother. He said he only waited about 20 minutes, but it seemed like years. Like many families, he said he was scared and feared the worst. My father had gone enough hours that he knew the information wasn't going to be good. And I think he was um, probably as prepared as he could be, even though he, you know, he wasn't. Robin adds, it's a difficult time for all victims. Life will never be the same. We just saw the plans we had. Uh, they're not going to be happening. Christmas is not going to be happening. Um, just, just won't be there. At this time a week ago, a community united. Lives were on the line. Some were saved, some could not be. Homes and businesses were randomly leveled. Lives and livelihoods changed forever. Local mental health officials say these are the feelings that have become commonplace since the tragedy. Survivor guilt, feelings of remorse that we survived while others did not. And the most predominant feeling, the sense that nothing is permanent anymore. Community-wide, we've had a tragedy, and all of us know someone who's been touched by this, even if we haven't personally been touched. And everybody is going to have some recurrent reactions to this. Many are using their faith to cope with the tragedy, even while their church buildings are barely left standing. Now that Airport Road is open for motorists, many are getting their first glimpse of the true horror of this scene. Not even a sunny day would help. They're going to be expecting to see one of their familiar buildings and see a pile of rubble and it's gonna it's gonna give them a little jolt. Twelve days after the killer tornado destroyed Holy Spirit Catholic Church and school, the youngsters finally went back to class in their new storefront building. Amy Whitty takes us there. Listen, I've got to tell you some rules that are gonna be a little different from the other schools. So everyone... If you didn't know better, today seemed more like the first day of school after a long summer vacation. But instead, these children and teachers are putting back the pieces after the killer tornado destroyed their church and school. It's a lot better than being in some place that's got no, um, just two walls for a gym. I had a set of Nancy J books in the classroom. They were my cousins. And then I was afraid they were gonna get wet and everything because my cousin gave them to me. But how are they? They're fine. Not only were educators able to salvage many school supplies, but they lucked out in finding school space at the Huntington Shopping Center on South Memorial Parkway. Even luckier to take over space vacated by a daycare center. That meant rooms were already in place. I'm excited, the children are excited, and this facility is fantastic. Counselors will be at the school throughout the day talking to kids who live through the ordeal. They say the best thing these students can do is talk about the devastating tornado. No more of our church. And our church is gone. And talk is what these students the did. They talked about their feelings and what happened to their church and school. And as the sign says, although their school is gone, their spirit is not. In Huntsville, Amy Whitty, 31 Eyewitness News. 
Oh, 500 students at Southern Junior College in Huntsville also went back to school today. The tornado destroyed their building, so today the college opened up at the Market Square on Memorial Parkway. Construction crews are still busy putting the finishing touches on their rented space at the shopping center. In my opinion, it's indescribable. Uh, there was nothing in this suite, and they literally had to tear down walls in Suite 11 in order to accommodate us. The business college was able to recover most of its belongings. No decision has been made on a permanent place for the college. While tornado damage, schools and businesses moved to new locations, several victim assistance centers are heading to other cities. The FEMA disaster application office shut down last night at 6 o'clock. By closing, more than 740 people applied for some form of federal or state disaster aid. Two million dollars, that's what a spokesperson for the Huntsville Solid Waste Authority says it may cost to repair an almost complete solid waste incinerator. The tornado destroyed the incinerator's tipping floor. Trucks used the floor to maneuver around after they dumped garbage. But as members of the uh, Solid Waste Authority heard tonight, the damage is mostly superficial. One construction worker was hurt in the incident. Luckily, the twister's high winds destroyed none of the equipment inside the plant. We can replace a building if we had to replace a uh, boiler or, uh, or pumps or uh, air pollution control equipment. Uh, the uh, fabrication for that equipment could be three or four months. The damage has set back construction by several weeks. A waste authority negotiator will work out damage estimates at the Huntsville landfill. The high winds toppled storage sheds and broke windows on some heavy equipment. All toll, officials estimate the damage at $45,000. Since much of this wasn't insured, an authority is asking the Federal Emergency Management Agency to supply the money for repairs. This afternoon, the Huntsville school system received an initial payment of $2.5 million from its insurance company. The elementary school was destroyed in the November 15th killer tornado. The total damage estimate is not yet known. We can move forward with the demolition of the school, and uh, hopefully that night also they will approve my recommendation to hire an architect and that that person can start moving forward with the plans to rebuild the school. Total destruction, a force few buildings could have withstood. That's the way emergency management officials describe Jones Valley School demolished by the tornado November 15th. As Adrian Gibson reports, what happened is considered a vivid illustration of why schools should be built extra strong. I would almost rebuild it where, it, you know, where if it hit one end of it might go, but the rest of it might be spared. These state and local officials today got their first close-up look at the destroyed Jones Valley School. A look in the hallways of the buildings shows mounds of debris, including heavy concrete blocks and steel support beams. Kids in schools are advised to go to hallways for protection against tornadoes, but this building would not have given them that protection. Well, this is an older school and the structure of it is, uh, would not beat, meet the current codes. Uh, schools constructed later than this one was do meet the current codes. School officials will rebuild Jones Valley School. School System Director of Support Services, Dr. Lee Gradford, says it will be stronger. I'm certain that when we rebuild this school, that it will contain a lot more safety than what this one had. Federal and state officials who have investigated this tornado of two weeks ago say all that could be done was done to protect the people in this school and other parts of the community. But they say once the school is built back, it will give even more protection than this old one afforded. The insurance industry says a damage assessment for insured property in Madison County and Morgan County is $135 million. The Insurance Information Institute says the Huntsville area lost $95.4 million in the twister. The remainder of the $135 million was in hail damage in Morgan County. You know, I've lived in Huntsville since 1958, 31 years, and have been with Channel 31 since 1963. It's a long time. I was also here doing the 74 tornadoes that really ripped up the valley badly as well as the more recent uh, 85 ice storms uh, that created so many problems. And during this recent series of events uh, with the tornadoes of uh, November 15th, um, once again I was able to see uh, firsthand and up close what it's like for both a TV station staff as well as the citizens of the valley to work under extreme pressure in a time where it really mattered and it really counted. In all those years, I don't think I've ever seen a television staff pull together more
cohesively than the Channel 31 staff did. Everyone did everything they could do, and they did it well. And I was pleased with the efforts that our staff uh, presented and the um, help they were able to give uh, people when they needed it on the air. And then beyond that, the citizens of the area, uh, beginning right after the tornado hit, shortly after 4.30 that afternoon, right on through the rest of the night, volunteers, workers, um, even, even friends and relatives, and then those who were complete strangers, helping everyone they could help, much of which you've seen on this two-hour presentation that's, that you've been watching all this time. And I certainly am pleased and, and particularly um, thankful, I suppose, for all of the feelings, all of the efforts, uh, and all of the spirit that was so well demonstrated uh, during these tragic events. And at Way TV, we hope this special video presentation will serve as a perpetual reminder of our commitment to be there when you need us. Joining me now is our news director, Cliff Wyndham. Cliff? Thanks, MD. I think MD has expressed many of the same sentiments that I would offer. What you've just seen is Channel 31's collective news accounts of a tragedy of the greatest proportions. Who could have ever imagined that any of us would have been challenged to respond in ways we never thought possible? Yet even in the midst of turmoil of that dark moment in our history, each member of the 31 Eyewitness News staff and Way TV endeavored to bring you the story as it unfolded. Our objective was simply to help us all make better sense of a situation that seemingly defied all logic. As a result, we were able to record for all time our struggle to remain and regain order in our lives and indeed triumph over adversity. Tragedy, turmoil, and triumph. We've seen it all. It should be clearly evident that the spirit of Huntsville, Alabama and the Tennessee Valley has not been broken by the tornado of 89. Some dreams have been shattered, but new dreams will replace them as we rebuild and climb to even greater heights. Now, I'd like to introduce the mayor of Huntsville, the Honorable Steve Hedinger. The night of November the 15th was the worst tragedy ever to hit the city of Huntsville. But I cannot say enough about the actions of those involved in the rescue efforts and the cooperation between all levels of government and across our many departments within the city as they all work together to restore calm after this major storm. As unfortunate as this tragedy was, it pulled the citizens of Huntsville together, and it made me so proud to be a part of this community. I also would like to thank the members of the media, particularly the local media, and Channel 31 for their efforts to keep the city up to date on the night of the tragedy and the days which followed. It'll be years before Huntsville looks the same as it did before November the 15th, but I know that'll happen. I grieve with those who lost loved ones, those who were injured, those who lost property. And I thank the many thousands of others who offered their help and support to pull Huntsville through. Larry F. Ammerman, Corey Renee Bentley, James Russell Black, Della Mae Buford, Godwin Chee. Alan Dale Cruz, Thomas Payne Fry, Vanessa Hastings Poole, Audrey L. Perford, Karen E. Jones, Scott Leslie Kozelski, John and Wanda Lewis, Karen and Jennifer Luker, Louise McCord, Mary Elizabeth Mahaffey, James Burr, Schumann Power. We are to begin to accept what happened as real and honor these 18 people because they are no longer with us. And all we have of them is the gift of their memory. When the clock stopped at gate cleaners, the husband turned to his wife and said the most profound words any of us will ever hear. I love you. And the clock stopped.
they were in the sanctuary at just prior to this time that the storm struck one of our associates uh, as a HEMSI volunteer and heard on his radio that the storm had hit out at the arsenal. He rushed around to the sanctuary. They were able to get into our little bitty basement. Meet Jonathan Lipp, a normal fourth grader at a normal day at school. Two weeks ago, there was nothing normal about Jonathan's life. He was practicing with his handbells when the tornado struck. It's not likely he will ever be the same again. I'm glad that I'm going to get to see this Christmas. I'm probably going to give more than take more. Jonathan's parents say there are times when the reality of the horror of that night makes the young boy cry. However, yeah. they don't believe any long-term effects will scar him. And to see those children up there playing those handbells on Wednesday uh, just, um, I think, inspired us all that we can continue to do what we've been doing and to have a better awareness of, of um, that life is precious.